Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, it's Wednesday, the 21st of December, 2022. And as you can see, I'm actually across the highway over at that West Support facility. It's a very cold day today, as you can see, but I was able to get a good pre-dawn flight around Giga Texas and saw quite a bit of interesting things. First of all, as you can see here, we've started off inside the casting machine structure again, trying to see if I can find any more of the Idra Gigapress parts. And there are some that you can see, like in this picture here, but the main large parts of it to assemble it have not yet arrived. So some parts, but not everything. Another thing that I was able to see, as you can see here, is the interior and the exterior rework of that west main entrance and that continues to see progress today and another area that i want to talk about briefly before we talk about over here is up at the battery cathode plant again that west foundation and a lot of work is continuing to put in the footings they're also putting some additional form work between the footings and they're also working in that very densely packed pier section as you can see in this particular image as well. Now as they continue to work here another thing that I did notice is that that large yellow crane as you can see here is being dismantled and it's going to be moved. Now I don't know if it's going to be moved to the south end for more construction on that side of the building or if it's going to be moved off site but it's something I'll continue to monitor. And then finally, since we're across the highway, one of the things I want to show you is right behind me, the trailers for that warehouse on wheels expansion over to this side. And as you can see by this image, they have like a racking system inside the trailers that makes it easy to load the parts, find the parts, and then remove the parts once they arrive. And what these trailers look to be as if they're the empty ones, which means they're waiting for the trucks to be arrive and then pick them up and then take them back to the suppliers. So very interesting operation that's going on over here in the West Support facility. No earthwork because of all of the recent rains, but otherwise more activity over here. So I hope that you enjoy this brief intro discussion of a few items and then this very cold flight around Giga Texas. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope you have a great week. Thank you. A special thank you to all of my outstanding Patreons for your continued encouragement and support. Patreon members get access to hundreds of high-resolution photos, previews of the future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my channel, please consider becoming a patron using this link, which is also in the video description. Please also consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga, Texas. Well, happy winter solstice here at a very cold, foggy, and kind of doom and gloom Giga Texas. But that's not stopping all the work, and there's a lot of positive activity here today. We're going to start off looking inside the casting machine structure. And directly ahead of the drone, right here where you can see some of the arrows, these are some of the larger pieces of the 9,000 ton gigapress. Now I think that these are actually the dies that are used inside of the gigapress itself. And then also right in front of the drone in the middle, it may be a extra furnace that's used to melt down some of the uh, scrap aluminum and makes those uh, kind of pancake aluminum pieces that we've seen on the outside uh, before. Now, you can also see in the middle of the building, a lot of these red and white components, those are also parts of that 9,000 ton gigapress. And we'll get a better view of that once we get uh, around the north 
east corner of the building. But in the foreground, you can see those black and white DMG Mori milling machines and also some of these blue and white crates with more of the equipment. You can also see on the left-hand side of the screen more of those red and white uh, materials and parts for that larger 9,000 ton gigapress. And as I go around the corner, you'll be able to start seeing that a little bit better. Unfortunately, we got a few of these pipes and uh, some columns in the way, but uh, a lot of activity, which is great to see. Now, there are some larger pieces, sort of the pedestal parts of the gigapress that have not yet arrived. But uh, other than that, quite a bit of other parts. You can also see some crates now starting to uh, come into view that have Idra's uh, name stamped on them. And it looks like they pretty much grouped all of the equipment necessary to start installing that gigapress in the middle of this facility. Now, if you also look close, you'll see the outline of the gigapress foundations in the concrete. And if you count, there's actually four of those foundations already pre-made into the concrete here. So in addition to this one larger gigapress, I expect at least one more, and then there's room for two more at some point in the future. Now, as we continue to uh, approach this corner, I'm gonna have to bring the drone back just a little bit because uh, there's a light stand right underneath. So I'm trying to be very cognizant and careful of that. And uh, now that we've cleared that, I'll give you a good view inside here. And as I mentioned, you can see those crates with Idra, the white and all of the red components have been kind of grouped together in the middle. And all of those are the parts for that uh, gigapress. And it looks like they're just uh, getting everything set up. So when the larger pieces arrive, they'll be able to install that gigapress. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed these views inside the casting machine structure and some of the exciting views of the 9,000 ton gigapress uh, getting ready to be assembled. As we fly west across the north face of the building, you can see a lot of these red and blue covered HVAC ducting that we moved inside. They have a lot of the doors shut right now because it's cold, so I don't blame them. However, these doors are open in the 4680 battery production cell portion of the building. So let's uh, try to get you a few views in through these open doors on top of each of the platforms, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what it looks like inside. The upper left one is on the fourth floor, a lot of open space. And the one we're looking in right now, as you can see, there's actually an open section from the third floor all the way down to the first floor in the middle portion of the building. And if you looked at my grid map video where I showed you the grid layout, you can see how that uh, looks. And you can take a look at that video uh, on my YouTube channel. Here you can see inside this section of kind of a receiving door, it looks like there's some rack mounts as well, but I'm not sure exactly what those are for. If you know, let me know. Uh, as we continue along the northwest corner of the building, we'll prepare to wrap around and head down towards the middle portion of the building where there's some interesting developments. As we pass by these receiving doors on the left, just note that these have been recently installed by removing the blank panels uh, that were installed uh, when the walls were originally put up, just like you see here. Now what we also see is another section of the asphalt lot being ripped up here and looks like preparation for some concrete work, uh, maybe to allow those doors to be opened up as well. So very interesting to see. Let's take this opportunity and look inside the third floor of General Assembly and also the battery structural pack section. 
As you can see, there are quite a bit of the Model Y structural packs in these crates. And I'll turn back uh, so you can get a better idea throughout this section and the entire floor of just how many of these battery packs are stored. Now this is also part of the factory that actually makes the structural packs. On this part is the third floor new part of the general assembly and they're using this for a lot of storage of materials, equipment, crates, and some of the vehicles as well. And as you can see, it uh, is full as far all the way back to the back wall. Now I'm going to show you some inside views of the main entrance. This is continuing to be reconfigured. You can see that mezzanine. It used to be a complete second floor all the way up to the glass panels, but most of that has been cut away as you see now. And as I pull back a little bit more, you can see work continuing on this apron section. Some of the pipe uh, excavation is going on. They've removed some of the original segments so that they can reconfigure the pipe work. And in this small asphalt lot, you can see that they're starting to rip this up as well for preparation for some more reconfiguration work. This is an interesting thing to see since it's all lit up in the third floor section here. Most of the time it's been dark, but now they have the lights. So I'm going to uh, bring the, the drone around closer to the window so you can take a look inside and see all of the materials being stored here. Now that Model Y that's hanging in the window, I have a lot of people asking about that. That's the first Model Y that was built at Giga Texas well over a year ago, and it's been hanging in that section for quite some time. At Cyber Rodeo, you could see that as well. But here is yet another part of the third floor that is now lit up, and you can see just how much of the equipment, some of that green wrapped items, some crates, and other materials have been brought in to this part of the building. So it's great to see all the lights on and all of this because it shows that uh, expansion work is continuing even on the third floor. And this is a good view of some of the excavation work going on and some of the concrete uh, removal to prepare this entire section for whatever plans that they have. I'm not sure what it is. I'm still looking forward to finding out what they do both on the inside and on this outside. Um, and it should be very interesting. And hopefully shortly after the beginning of the year, we'll start seeing some clues of what that's gonna be like. Arriving at the northwest corner again on the roof, we can see just how much of the steam is coming out of these HVAC ducting and also some of the enclosures for the cooling system. And it looks like they're preparing to work on the last remaining one. So let's position up towards the north and let's see what is going on with the electrical switch yard today. So even up here, despite the gloomy weather, there's a lot of activity going on with the new electrical switch yard. It looks like crews are moving some of the steel parts via the forklift towards the south. As you can see, all six of the very large V-top circuit breakers have been installed as well. On the tops of each of the A-frame towers, you can see small poles. Those are a lightning uh, rods to help protect the facility in case of electrical storms. And you can also see that cable tray trench is continuing to expand, reaching now from the primary trench next to that uh, control room over to the main parts of the electrical switch yard. And in fact, crews are building the next one of those uh, sections reaching over to the electrical switch yard right now, and we'll get a little bit of a closer look at it. It's just a interesting, almost, uh, I don't know, eerie look of the main building with all of the steam rising from the roof, especially with these low clouds. As I mentioned, you can see the cable tray trenches 
Much of the ones on the right hand side and the main one have been poured in concrete and the crews are now working on this extension that will reach out over towards where those uh, two circuit breakers are located. And there should be a couple more of these extensions constructed in the near future. They're also working on a little bit of the south extension of the cable tray trench as you can see here. We also see what looks like to be preparations on these two transformer um, mounting pads and hopefully we'll see the transformers arrive pretty soon. So this is a good view of the east parking lot and the warehouse on wheels and we'll continue to reposition the drone over towards the battery cathode plant. As I mentioned there's been a lot of rain recently and you can see the effects of that in this lined pond. It's uh, almost overflowing so they're going to have to come in and start uh, pumping that out very soon. We can get a good idea of the activity here on the West Foundation uh, with this view. On the left hand side of the screen you can see that large yellow crane is being disassembled. The truck is there to move it. Now I think it may be going to the south end for resumed construction of piers but I'm not 100% sure, so something to be monitoring. But as you can see, they are actively uh, disassembling the crane right now as we are watching in this video. As we approach the foundation, we can see that South Trench now has uh, the white plumbing installed, and this will form the southern end of this new structure. You can also see these four long rows of footings that are continuing to be in installed. This center section with the densely packed concrete and rebar piers is getting the footings around it on both of these uh, new excavations. We can also see it looks like uh, some excavations uh, perpendicular to the direction that the uh, footings are going. And it looks like, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen and on the top of the screen, that they're making these foundation bars in between the footing. So I think that's what we're seeing being constructed here as well. Uh, as always, take a look at the workers just to give a good scale to how large this structure and these footings truly are. And it's just uh, amazing just to imagine just how large this is. I wish I could give you a better sense of scale from the drone, but um, this is about the best that I can do. That uh, densely packed pier section is most likely going to be supporting something extremely heavy. And then where you see the excavation work going on, these piers are actually geo piers. So there's two different kinds of piers in this particular section. As we approach the main building, I'll show you the work that the crews are doing on these iron pipes. They've put this white paint or insulation material around the pipes. They've been fashioning them into manifolds. And as you can see underneath that steel structure, they're now mounting some of the pipes that will enter into the building itself. And there's actually some small holes that have been drilled into the concrete panels. Uh, this is a really good close view of the steel structure. Some of those pipes that have been uh, uh, suspended underneath it and the work to uh, install this uh, system. This is also a good view of a crane in work moving up uh, some uh, uh, in this case, latrines up to the top of these two temporary platforms. And as we continue to go towards the north, you can see remnants of the water uh, from all the rain. This small pit is where they've been installing some pipes, and it looks like they're going to have to wait till the rains uh, stop so they can dr uh, drain it out. Uh, this north clearing and material staging location uh, has got some activity, but with all of the rains, it's uh, quite muddy. So. Uh, I'm not going to be expecting much there for another several days for this to dry out. As we continue over this section, you can see the earthwork continuing to uh, continue to fill in these water detention ponds to reclaim this land for future construction. And this steel structure now has all the walls and the roof installed. I'll give you a closer look inside this portion of the uh, cathode plant. This is where some of those deep foundations were installed and it looks like they're doing some work on the far wall inside plus some of these interesting steel pipes for uh, ventilation uh, shafts kind of being installed all throughout the, uh, the building. Here's some more of these uh, white platform components and a truck bringing even more materials today. 
and uh, uh, just a lot of activity fitting out the inside of the battery cathode plant. So let's fly over the warehouse and wheels yard and then go take a look at the new vehicle transport lot today. Stop here and pull back a little bit so you can see the uh, entire length of the building with all of the steam. Very interesting shot and also all of these trailers that are part of that warehouse on wheels. And then later on the video, I'll show you where they're expanding on the west side of the highway. But as we approach the new car staging and transportation lot, we see yet again a lot of activity, a lot of Model Ys on both the west and the east side. And right now it looks like just one truck picking up Model Ys, but there were multiples of these uh, happening throughout my time here flying. This is the intersection that's being reworked and it's uh, Still, I'm not sure what the final design will be, but it looks like they're putting these angled corners on the parking lot and also doing some plumbing work. This is the supercharger installation 32 with a provision, what I believe to be for canopy being installed. And it looks like most of the electrical work to hook it up is now completed or near completion. These two sections of the apron continue to be reworked in front of these newly installed receiving doors. And then as we approach the body and white roof section where they've been installing these HVAC ducting and the grading material, we can see where the progress is today. All of the materials around the perimeter of this protection fence are those uh, grates kind of material that are being used to fill in this section of the roof. And as you can see, those are open to the atmosphere. Now I've been asked, well, how do they keep all the water out? And I think, as you can see down inside, this is designed to have water collection and drainage into the main water management system that's been installed throughout the building. This is a good view of the parking lot and material staging on this side of the building. The open top trailers are used for scraps from the stamping machine structure and then they're taken for recycling. It's a good view on the east side of the stamping machine structure with all the blue uh, covered crates, the blue wrapped items, and those green and white items. You can see that there's actually a couple of them have been now moved inside the stamping too on the south side, which is great news, which means that more of the assembly of this AIDA stamping press is continuing. And I'll fly down a little bit lower. You can get an idea of what these uh, components look like. Also on the left-hand side of the screen, a lot of the steel materials have now been moved away. Uh, I don't know if they're inside being assembled or if they've removed them uh, to a different location. Here you can see crews actively working on uh, the underground conduits uh, and also they've been installing the wire into those conduits and it looks to me like they may be preparing, I don't know if those are lights or poles to replace these lower level poles. We can also see the remnants of the rain from what we had the last uh, day or so, so you can get an idea of that the, the volume of the rain was pretty uh, uh, immense. And also the cyber pond is pretty full as well. But this is not stopping the work with the steel corrugated water management pipe. And you can see that crews are installing now into the southernmost part of the trench using the trench boxes to prevent the sides of the trenched from collapsing in on the workers. And this segment that uh, you see at the bottom of the screen was just added right before I started filming here. More trench work uh, underway for more of the steel corrugated pipe installation. And then here you can see the rework of this pipe that goes under and into the building. They've installed these concrete segments and this 90 degree elbow, and now they're replacing the steel pipe that went underneath the building. Here's a good view of some more of the concrete, the last remaining sections being broken up for removal. Once that section is done, we'll pretty much have all of the concrete gone. You can see the sections here lined up, ready for the yard trucks to pick them up and then move them to at least five different sites, uh, places around the site for uh, temporary storage. 
And here you can see the steel corrugated pipe getting ready for some modification and connections. And then the corner of that underground water splitter box, which is used for the water management system. So let's go over the highway and take a look at the activity at the West Support Facility. If you've been watching my videos a long time, you will recognize that quite a bit of the materials on this staging location have now been uh, moved or relocated. And it's pretty much just these containers that are left with just a little bit of materials. Now this is all being moved to allow for expansion of this section to have more warehouse on wheels trailers. At the bottom right of the screen, you can see the remaining bridge crane rails that were taken out of the casting machine structure before they started doing some rework of the concrete columns uh, with some bands for strengthening and also changing out some of the uh, bridge crane rails. I'm gonna give you a closer look at uh, some of the trailers here that are part of the warehouse and wheels. What you'll see is there's a bunch of rack mounts, various different kinds. This allows ease of packing the materials, moving them, and also taking them out for production. And then these trailers are waiting for the trucks to arrive, uh, drop off a full truck, and then take these back to the suppliers. As you can see here, all of the earthworking machinery is pretty much on standby. That's because with all of the rains, the dirt here is now pretty much uh, a lot of mud, and it makes it very difficult to rework this. So right now, I would expect a pause in the grading uh, work here to try to uh, finish up uh, leveling out the hills and the ponds, and uh, probably maybe mid next week when the weather uh, improves and warms up they'll be back at work but right now it's just way too muddy and uh, uh, it looks like uh, they've got quite a bit of it completed up to this point in time but there's still uh, probably at least another week or so of work bringing in more fill dirt so that's giga texas on a cold cloudy winter solstice day i hope you enjoyed the video the narration and the information and again, I hope you have a great rest of the week. And if I don't get a chance to fly on Friday, also Merry Christmas. Take care.